Memory of Cherry, Two Philippines Ghost Stories Book 2. First published on 2003 by Psycho and written by Judy Mary Geronimo. I studied <coughs> I studied in an exclusive girls' school on Tanay Avenue during my high school years. A medium-sized school where the buildings stood close together. It stood in a quiet section of Quezon City, a block away but parallel to the bustling traffic of Quezon Avenue. Every day, we used to hold our flag ceremony in the quadrangle near the grade school department. I used to come to school early in morning and hang out with my friends before assembly. We used to sit in the benches near the sward so that we'd easily hear the bell when it rang. I remember a concrete bench under one of the trees which bore an inscription that read in loving memory of Mary Cherry Chua. I'd always been fascinated with this bench and at, and at same time what really. According many of the students in my school were afraid of this bench. They said it was the heart of male malevolent male or at least a spirit who was crying out of pain. According to witness, they sometimes hear the voice of someone crying as they pass by the past. This is why some students would either cross to the other side of the quadrangle or go out of the vehicle when passing it. Other claim anyone who sat in the bench become possessed by the malevolent spirit that guarded it. The pattern was the same all the time. The student who sat on the bench would suddenly burst into tears and then train. This happened to several elementary schools. Girls After several such incidents, some parents began to think twice about enrolling their children in school. One day, my friends decided to play root or there on the benches. I gamely joined in the fun. Most of the dares were pretty simple, stuff like go to the middle of the quad and sing the national anthem at the top of your lungs, or introduce yourself to the first 10 people who passed by. Besides, I wanted to know the juicy teeth bits that would come out when I when my friend pick through. Just then I realized it was my turn to pick through or there. Since I wasn't ready to divulge any secrets, I chose there. Okay, my friend Alison, I dare you to move. Na not I think we run out of tears. Alam ko na. Either not each other who could do the bed with Cherry. Another classmate, Mary said. But what about the curse? Maka mama yung mapossessed din siya, said Alice. What could happen is broad daylight and there are a lot of us here, said another classmate. So, I took up the dare, marching bravely to the bench. I plucked myself on it, many of my friends uploaded, others looked apprehensively to see whether anything would happen to me. To give them a good scare, I pretended to faint. At that, my friend rushed over to me, it was only when I felt bending over me that I opened my eyes and began to laugh. Fool you! I cried. They all home in disgust. A few days later, I stayed late in the school to practice for a school play. It was almost dark by the time my rehearsal ended, and I really wanted to go home immediately.
treated me. There was hardly enough left in the school, in the campus. Just a few high school students. There was a as I was in hurry to go to the gate and see if my ride was there, I didn't really notice where I was going. I didn't know I was passing directly in front of Cherry's bench until I practically stumbled over it. Just, I was about, just as I was about to turn away to go to the other side, however, I heard a soft moan like someone sobbing. I paused, not sure what I heard. Then I heard it again, this time it was louder. Feeling goosebumps breaking out over body, I ran, I ran over like hell towards the gate. I dared not look back, for fear I would see someone sitting on the fence. The following day I told my friends and we decided to find out what happened to Carrie. Most of, most of the teacher would not say anything when we asked them about the fence and share but finally one of the older teachers decided to grant our request and tell us the whole story. Mary Chair was a happy go lucky 12 years old, one of the outstanding students in grade 6. He was bright, cheerful, and friendly. He was also very pretty. He had chinky eyes that nearly disappeared whenever she smiled. She had a very, very fair complexion, nearly paper white. She was slim and tall for her age. She was a favorite of almost all the teachers. One day, she didn't come to class. The teacher thought she was sick and in, in bed at home, so they didn't keep this out of the ordinary. But later that afternoon, the parents of Cherry came to school. Harry didn't come home from school the previous day, they said. They thought she was sleeping over at the classmate's house, but she, ne but she never called and they were worried. After questioning all her classmates, the teachers and Carrie's parents found out that Carrie did nor make any plans to sleep over at any of her friends. The last that anyone saw of her was the previous day, right after dismissal, when she told some friends to go ahead because she was passing by her locker to pick up some books. They thought she'd gone straight home after that. A school guard searched and showed her parents through the words. After a two hour search, they found her body behind some trees in the garden near the quadrangle. She was naked from the waist down. Her skirt was later found in some shrubs near the trees. Her lower torso was bloodied, evidence that she was raped. Her hands were tied and a sock was stuffed inside her mouth. And her eyes were swollen and shut. Her handkerchief was tied around her neck. She was raped, tortured, and strangled to death. A few days left, Later, her killer was found, a janitor who was previously fired by the school. He wanted to get back at the school, was firing him and choose Cherry because she was really popular and her death would bring shame to the school. After she was buried, the school tried to make some sort of amends by constructing a concrete bench in the spot where she was found in loving memory of Mary Chua, Mary Cherry Chua. A few weeks after the bench was built, strange things began happening. Students kept hearing someone sobbing whenever they passed by the bench. Then the possession stories began cropping up. The sister from our school offered prayers for the eternal rest of her soul, but it didn't stop her soul from coming back and crying out to other students. I haven't been to my school in a while, but I'm pretty sure Harris Ben is still there. Sabi ni Angel Porti, ito yung mas darker and creepy version sa story ni Mary Chua. In my version kasi eh, sinagya akong maging light and sigaan maging tragic daw para maging approachable pa rin siya sa mga minor reader niya.